That is a carcass. That's a skeleton. Good morning. It is now 7.30 in the morning. We got up at 4.30 to leave the house for 5. Our bus picked us up at 5.10 and we didn't get onto the road until 6 o'clock. <laughs> Uh, but right now it is 7.30 and we are having breakfast before we make it up to, I guess, the base of the mountain, which is where we went to yesterday, um, to that lagoon. And that's going to be our starting point today. But Waskaran. Yeah, same national park. If you are here and you're here for three days, you can get a three-day pass, which costs 60 solas, or it's $30, or 30 solas per day to enter. This is the little breakfast spot. Pretty uh, quaint, and there's the mountains in the background, which probably look like clouds. But yeah, let's get some breakfast and start the day. Okay, we are officially at the trail for Laguna 69, apparently the holy land of the Andes Mountains. Hopefully donkey. <laughs> <laughs> Check that view out. And this begins our ascend to 4,600 meters. Right now we are at 3,850. So I think I'm actually acclimating pretty good. Yeah, you're pretty <laughs> good compared to Cusco. <laughs> I nearly died in Cusco. The first time I arrived there was just absolute hell. Like I, I couldn't move. I was just like bedridden. It was horrible. <laughs> and now to be at this elevation, which is Cusco's elevation, no, it's still 3,500 meters um, and still be okay. I'm feeling pretty good, but these <laughs> next almost 1,000 meters will really test me, I think. It feels pretty hot just because the sun is beaming down. It's about 8 degrees. Like, the air is cold, but the sun is just killing. But this is the start to the next three hours. Okay, it is pretty hot with the sun. Um, failed to mention, it is now... 8.53 and it's a good start to the day. There's no clouds, no rain, no nothing. Pretty surprising. Considering yesterday it was kind of rainy and uh, very cloudy and we, I guess we got there around noon. It's a little bit different. But this is pretty cool. Super neat. Every little bit here just blows my <laughs> expectations away. It is a little bit hard to breathe, as you can notice, but it's just incredible. Every time I get somewhere, I'm just smiling, ear to ear. I look like a fool, but I am absolutely loving this. Again, I can't remember the name of this national park, Warasco or something like that. I highly recommend coming here. It's more off the beaten path. There are some other Westerners here, actually. Uh, on my bus, there's about five. Uh, so this is the first time I actually run into Westerners doing these uh these little activities that i've been doing that are mostly just like peruvian nationals which is really cool but it's nice to see that other people are also discovering these areas because they're not really advertised as heavy this place is it's pretty well known um among the peruvians especially but among like tourists or travelers that like to go out into nature it's a pretty hot spot too uh but again because of the protests and everything that's going on in Peru right now. There's not many travelers. So realistically, as bad as it sounds, now's the time to come. Oh wow. <laughs> you don't see that every day. Hey. So I've been smiling from ear to ear since arriving here. It's because it's so Beautiful. Oh wow. Are they fighting or playing? Wow. I've never seen that before. These cows are living the best life. Damn. So yeah, as I was saying, I think I found my new purpose in life. <laughs> mountain climbing. Well hiking. Mountain hiking. I wanna to get to as high as an elevation as possible through hiking. Just I guess as a challenge to myself or as a bucket list. 
I think that would be really cool. <sighs> so today will be my first high elevation at 4,600 meters. My current record is 30, well, I guess today is 3,900 as of now. But before that it was 3,500, I think, or something like that. This place is definitely gonna test me, that's for sure. I'm already starting to struggle to breathe. We're about half an hour in. I guess I haven't acclimated as much as I thought I did. I probably should got walking sticks too, like Aya did. Pretty smart. More cows. Man, I would kill to own a farm here. I think that would be absolutely incredible. <laughs> oh, there's the calf. Hey, little guy. Imagine owning a farm here. And this is your view. We've started the elevation. We're 47 minutes into the hike, not an hour. It's starting to become heavier brush. It's not horrible, but the path is kind of narrow. So it does get in your way a bit. But so far, it's not bad. This is definitely where we start slowing down. This doesn't look bad here, thank God. I also forgot to take my altitude pill until about 10 minutes ago. So that's probably why I'm feeling it so much. Right now, I was starting to get a little bit dizzy, which is not good up here, considering there's no way back besides this path that we're taking. But I am feeling better now. I got some coca leaves, and uh, I'm actually eating a coca candy right now, which definitely helps. So it's a little tighter. And this isn't even the hard part. I'm excited to see that. So, I can't breathe. I'm chewing on coca leaves now. Definitely helping. You can probably hear that waterfall and how powerful it is. But it's been 30 minutes. No, it hasn't. Yeah, 25 minutes. It's 10 10 right now. That's how far we've come up. We were all the way down there at first when the breast did get heavy. And now we are almost at the waterfall that I initially saw. As bad as coca leaves taste, they are phenomenal. It's like an instant cure. Not cure, but <laughs> aid. It is getting colder though, especially with all the vegetation. It brings down the temperature too. I think we are coming up on the top. <laughs> Not anytime soon, but within eyes reach, sight. That's the tall waterfall I was recording earlier. And we will be above it. I'm guessing the lagoon feeds into that. As you may have noticed, I changed my shirt because I was fully drenched and it was getting super cold. So I got my other shirt hanging on the back. My other one hanging on her bag to dry so I can change when I get up there again. <laughs> Can't really see. There's people right up there. I think that is the final destination. I hope, because I'm running out of coca leaves. And my heart rate's going at like 135. This is exhausting, but rewarding. I love it. It is now getting a lot more difficult. These are very steep and crumbly. Guessing it's this way. Honestly, I think if you're prepared, this isn't that bad at all. If I at least had hiking shoes instead of plain running shoes and actually had ankle support, this would not be bad at all. I genuinely think anyone could do this if they come prepared. If not, you can still do it. It just won't be as fun. <laughs> but still, get out here if you get the chance. We're approaching the top. And we just had our life shattered by a guide saying that this is not the final destination. There's still another hour. This peak was a lie. Honestly, I'm 
jumped on to say this is the lagoon I came to see oh. and call it a day. Oh. Yeah? <laughs> I wish. Some gummy worms on the ground. That would be ideal. Right about now. One hour. Oh god. We're at 4,300 meters and one hour to go. I won't lie. That did demotivate me. But if this stays flat like this, not a problem at all. It's a nice steady pace, no more incline. And we're good. So just over the peak and past that lagoon is this giant opening. It definitely doesn't remind me of the Rathay Highlands from World of Warcraft, which I definitely don't play. <laughs> like hills brad foothills which i wouldn't know since i definitely don't play world of warcraft as a troll mage a and hunter there. where or what's that? Uh, <laughs> i don't know what that is it looks like the pattern of a cow or is that a carcass oh god there's pumas in this area right that was a yes Okay, this isn't bad at all. Look at this. We just got the road paved for us. <laughs> Pretty sweet. That is a carcass. That's a skeleton. Oh, frick. It's wet. <laughs> Worth it. Yeah, that's a bull. There's still skin on that. Oh man. This guy got ravaged. The skull's literally split into two. And bones all over. What the hell was here? Oh man. Sinking into the ground too. Goddamn wetlands. Alright, well, I should get back to the path. You ever wonder, who discovered this? Like which guy climbed up that whole, I don't know, two hours to see where this goes? Like, what was the motivation? There's already two giant lakes down there that are turquoise blue. And then we passed two huge waterfalls. But what kept this person going? How do you discover this area? I always wonder, what was the end goal? Exploration or settlement? How long ago was it discovered? It's a good question. It's just crazy to think that someone came all the way out here and some people actually paved the way here. Thank you, those people, for doing that and making our lives easier and more adventurous in a sense. It'd be crazy to have discovered this on your own or as a group, exploring to some friends center of the base camp would be awesome this would be a gnarly campsite besides that cow carcass and pumas and whatever else is lurking around trying to kill us it would be great just can't get over how grand everything is like it's huge still another 40 minutes so good news and bad news one kilometer left which is Fantastic, in an ideal situation, which this is not, since now it's uphill again. We're climbing there, and around there, and up, and that is where we are going. Estimated 40 minutes to get there. I think I've destroyed my shoes. They're wet and falling apart, I feel. Probably not. Okay, so this discovery was for settlement. There's a structure there. I'd live here. There's water flowing everywhere. Ice cold water. 
fresh mountain air, death machine animals. There's also many varieties of duck here. I've seen three different kinds so far. I wasn't able to get them on camera though, unfortunately. Some are pretty big. Uh, that's all I've seen. Now, I gotta save my energy. Talking and recording is very hard. That's probably why I'm dying. So, I'll catch you on my next break. So update, thank you. Hmm? Update time. Just taking some rest. I am not doing well at this altitude. Having some chocolate just to get some sugar in me. Um, I haven't stopped coughing for a solid like 20 minutes. And on top of that, my legs feel extremely heavy to the point where I can almost not feel them. So every few steps, I feel like I'm gonna give out, give out which is weird. So just having a little break. <laughs> You're having beef. Got the walking sticks now which should help. Also, there's the initial lake that I thought was the top point, which was very deceiving considering we had to walk everything else and all the way up here. Damn you lake. But we're almost there. And now to continue on. We're close. I can't move my legs. You okay? Huh? I can't breathe. The final stretch. Oh my god. I can't breathe. I'm going to maybe 50% of my normal oxygen. I am running on empty. This is it. It's right there. I hope. This is ridiculous. To say the least. This is it. This is it. Please be it. Finally, flat ground. I see blue. We made it. It's there. This is the greatest moment of my life right now. <laughs> Just incredible. Look at these views. I suddenly feel, feel cured. Wow, this is insane. Hands down, one of the hardest things I've done in my life. Not that hard if I could breathe. In terms of like the physicality of it, it's not bad at all. But it's the altitude. But we made it. We made it. It's been a total of three hours and 15 minutes. This is amazing. Some new friends along the way. All the way from Singapore. That was a lot worse than yesterday. So we had to cut the visit up top short because it's starting to hail and the rain is coming in. So we we're trying to rush down this mountain, which is ultra steep and three hours long as fast as we can as you can see it is not going so good <laughs> but still an incredible view wish we could have stayed there longer but honestly it was still good enough just pretty grateful that we made it up there at one point I honestly did not think I was going to be able to make it up. I could not feel my legs. No. I thought they were going to give out. Until I had some chocolate and coca leaves. And 
really helped quite a bit. I think the sugar was what I needed in reality. But yeah, now we're making our way back down this beautiful hike. And back home we go. After this, you gotta catch a bus to Lima at 9.30 at night to arrive at 6.30 in the morning. So today starts at 4.30 in the morning and we get on a bus at 9.30 at night and arrive in Lima hopefully for 6.30 when I got work at 9. It was a weekend. That was literally packed to the brim. Pretty awesome. I love Peru. We have made it down, I don't know, Death's Peak is what I'm going to call it, and now we're in Death Valley, we're almost at the plains. Honestly, coming down was amazing, it was, it was incredible, um, just seeing the views and with all the clouds clearing up, well not really clearing up, but there's more visibility, the clouds are a lot higher than they were in the morning, so we were able to see the other peaks, which you can't see now because it is raining, it did start raining as we were coming down, which was nerve-wracking at times. I actually slipped on a rock and I kind of straight-legged it. So when I hit the floor, my knee was completely straight. My camera's dying at 40%. So yeah, that really hurt. But now it's just a straight shot away and we are homebound, which means a two and a half hour bus ride. Overall, fantastic time. Oh God, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I just rolled my ankle. Really bad. <laughs> All right, we're back. <laughs> so I didn't break my ankle, but it hurts with every single step. Um, I think the camera may have cut off earlier, but I shocked my back with my, what, when I slipped and uh, straight legged it into the ground. Also, the rain was magnificent. Honestly, if there was no rain, it probably wouldn't be the same experience. And I hate rain, but this was just like, Amazing. I, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. If I come back, I'm going to check the forecast and make sure it is raining. 